Is crypto the investment opportunity of the decade? A big claim? However, the more time I spend studying this new asset class, the more that I'm convinced that this will be going so much higher. And I've got some great things to share with you guys, starting with the big problem and why if you're in your 20s, 30s or 40s, then you got a bit screwed as an investor. We'll look at the main wealth building vehicles. We have stocks, bonds and property and why compounding just might be working against you. And then we'll finish with the big opportunity, why I think crypto just might be the trade of the decade. As always, if you do find anything useful in the video, then drop a like, always appreciated. Okay, so if you're in your 20s, 30s or 40s, then you have a problem. So there are two main phases of investing, the accumulation stage, climbing up the mountain and building up your wealth, and then the wealth preservation stage, protecting your money once you've reached critical mass. And the big thing to note here has to do with demographics and how the baby boomers had a big advantage over the younger generation. Take a look. So here are the main demographic groups. Starting with the youngest, we have Gen Z. Now, these have not yet gone into peak spending, so they're still relatively young, but it's the people in the 20s, 30s and 40s. These are the millennials and Gen X. This will be the vast majority of people watching this video and we are in the accumulation stage of our wealth building. Then we have the older generation, the baby boomers, and these guys actually control most of the wealth and most of the assets. And this big generation group are now beginning to go into retirement and they are in a different stage. They are now in the wealth preservation stage before the last generation, which is the silent generation, and they will be going into the distribution stage where they're actually passing down the assets. So we're all here today because we want to build up our wealth and we are in the accumulation stage, right? Awesome, so what are our options? Well, traditionally we have stocks, bonds and property. Okay, let's start with bonds. But bonds are not really a wealth building vehicle. Right now, the 10 year treasury gives about one and a half percent. And something about one and a half percent isn't that exciting, right? In fact, it means for you to double your money, it would take about 50 years. 50 years. Now, bonds are great once you've made your money because keeping a million in cash earning nothing doesn't make sense. So putting it in bonds earning 1.5% does make sense. But for accumulation, bonds are out. Okay, next we have the stock market. But hold up, just before we jump in, let's just take a quick look at the stock market. And this is the Wiltshire 5000, which pretty much makes up the entire US stock market. And it goes back from 1950 all the way to where we are today. Now, one of the best bits of investing advice is buy low, sell high. But just look how high the stock market is right now. And remember, in the year 2000, this was the dot-com bubble where stocks had a huge run-up to overpriced levels and this is where we're at today. So this says to me the stock market is incredibly overvalued. Are we able to buy low, sell high? Is it more likely over the next five to 10 years that this is going to give similar returns or that we may see a big drop? This is the NASDAQ, which is pretty much tech stocks. And again, it's the very same picture. And this is the S&P 500. Again, a very similar picture. Now, we could go down the route of picking individual stocks, but the data shows that over the long term, statistically, we will make more money using an index fund. And historically, this has given about a 10% return a year. But looking at where the stock market is right now, it looks like we'd be lucky to get 10% per year. Unfortunately, it's likely to be going lower as we revert to the mean. Either way, when I look at the stock market today, it doesn't exactly scream opportunity. One caveat is the emerging markets. The emerging markets over the next 10 years could be the US of the last 10 years. Now, there is always the option of commodities, trading commodities like copper, silver, palladium, but that doesn't sound that appealing. Okay, so property. Real estate is the big opportunity, right? 
Awesome. Well, let's take a look. So here we have the average house prices for the United States. And this is why the baby boom generation had it so easy. So they were buying the average house price around this time, and they were only paying about $30,000. Now, if you own property, then compounding worked in your favor and you were able to generate a vast amount of wealth. However, for the younger generation who are just getting started with investing right now, you're having to pay up to $360,000 for one property. And so this is how compounding may actually be working against you. And it's the same picture for people in the UK. So the baby boom generation were only paying about 10,000 pounds for their house. Grandparents were only paying about 2,000 pounds. And the younger generation of today are paying up to 250,000 pounds, which is why for a lot of young people, they're not able to get started on the property ladder. So it looks like the baby boomers had it sweet. They were born at just the right time where compounding was is working on their side. But for the younger generation just getting started, compounding is actually working against you. And for many, house prices are becoming out of reach. So it looks like from an investing point of view, Gen X and millennials have been handed a bit of a poo sandwich. We've inherited an overpriced stock market, inflated real estate prices, and got given a bit of a pointless asset class, bonds. Well, that was until crypto came along. Crypto is a game changer. Crypto is disrupting major industries. And the best part is it actually gives the younger generation a chance to accumulate wealth. And why do I think this just might be the opportunity of the decade? Well, this can all be summed up in one chart. Just before we take a look at the most important chart, this is a chart of the total crypto market. And it may look to the untrained eye that this is also in a bubble. This was the 2018 peak here. This was the huge run up that we've had in 2021. And many people may think that crypto is in a bubble, but let me give you the proper context. And here it is guys, the one most important chart of this entire video, why I think crypto is the opportunity of the decade. Here we have the size of the global markets. So we have the global bond market, stock market, gold and crypto, and we're working in the trillions of dollars. Here we have bonds, here we have stocks, here we have gold, and here we have crypto. So global bond market is about 130 trillion. Global stocks is about 95 trillion. Gold is about 10 trillion. And crypto right now is about 1.7 trillion. So my question to you is where do you think the opportunity for the next five to 10 years is going to be? Which market do you think has the best chance of doubling or growing five times? 10 times. And this is why even though the crypto market on a chart looks really overvalued, this is why I think it's still got a long way to go. Now, when I look at that chart, now I see opportunity. Now I see huge growth potential. And now I see a true vehicle for younger people to accumulate wealth. However, this is going to be a double-edged sword. As the market is still very small, it does mean this is going to be incredibly volatile. Okay, Charles Hoskinson is the founder of Cardano, which is one of the biggest cryptos out there and one of the most eagerly anticipated smart contract platforms. And he verbalizes what's going to be happening in the crypto space over the next 10 years better than anyone. Check it out. Over the next 10 years, there's going to be more advancement in monetary policy from our industry than the last 100 years of central banks. In the next 10 years, there's going to be more advancement on financial engineering, the construction of financial products, and the marketplaces upon which trade them than the last 100 years from Wall Street and England and Tokyo and all the other places in the world combined. In the next 10 years, there's going to be more movement of wealth 24 hours a day, seven days a week on crypto rails than there will be through the BIS and through the fixed protocols and all these other things that are the mainstay staples of the financial world. 
In the next 10 years, there's going to be more automation and innovation and open law and automated law and regulation in our industry the last 100 years of transnational agreements that have occurred. In the next 10 years, the next 2 billion people who enter the world financial system, the vast majority of those people will be brought into our system from the cryptocurrency space. That's where we're at. That's what our industry is about. This is why there are so many incredible people who are in this industry working incredibly hard every single day. Sounds pretty good, right? However, as mentioned, with greater opportunity to the upside comes a greater level of risk to the downside. And we have covered the risk curve before. However, let's just take a quick look at how this works on an asset class level. Check it out. So this is the risk curve and essentially it's made up of two parts. You have the potential reward or the return on investment of any particular investment and then how much risk you're prepared to take. Now, when it comes to asset classes, obviously cash, you're not taking any risk but you're also getting no return. Next, you would probably have bonds. So bonds, you're getting a really small return, but with government bonds, it's pretty much risk-free. We then have the stock market. So the stock market, you are going to get a higher return, but you are taking a greater degree of risk. Now, with an index fund, it's a lot safer than trying to pick individual stocks. But just know when it comes to crypto, you are heading further down the risk curve. Yes, we can get these potential reward of doubling your money 200%, 300%, but with investing, there is no free lunch. It is going to come with a higher degree of risk. So it looks like the baby boomers had it sweet and that Gen X and millennials were handed an overpriced stock market, inflated real estate prices, and bonds which only yield about 1.5%. Well, that was until crypto came along. So if you can learn how to handle the big swings up and down, if you can learn how to handle the times of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and if you can learn how to handle your portfolio dropping between 50 and 70%, then you too will also get to experience the huge gains to the upside. And this is why I think crypto is the trade of the decade. And some final tips, remember, be smart. You don't need leverage. Only use money you can afford to lose and have a time frame of at least one year as nobody knows where the market is going to go in the short term. Now, before we wrap up with some final words from Charles Hoskinson, just to say then, if you enjoyed this video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Click below and join us. I do have some great videos coming up that you don't want to miss. Okay, thanks for watching guys. And I'm going to hand you over to Charles Hoskinson as we close out this opportunity of the decade. Once mankind knows they have fire, you can't go back. You can't change that. You can't put that genie back in the bottle. Central banks will fade away. It's just going to happen. Your conventional legacy banks are going to fade away. The payment rails that are so nepotistic and corrupt and slow and inefficient and expensive will fade away. And good riddance, it wasn't us who charged 15% to some of the poorest people in the world to move their money home to take care of their parents. It was the people who ran the old system. It wasn't us in this industry who charged 85% interest to lend $100 to a subsistence farmer desperately trying to survive after a drought. It was the legacy financial system. It wasn't our industry that laundered hundreds of billions of dollars for drug dealers and evaded sanctions and participated in oil for food and all kinds of these horrible programs that ended up enriching and empowering some of the worst human beings the world has ever known. It was the legacy financial system. And never allow them to say that ours is the industry that's the risk. Ours is the industry that's the antidote to the excesses, corruption, and nepotism that we found. This is an industry of frustration that has now been replaced by an industry of creativity and innovation. We're going to change the world. It's just that simple. We didn't ask permission. We came here and we're going to get it done together. And there's simply too many people now. The markets are simply too large. The innovation is simply too vast. It's going to happen. It's no longer a question of if, 
It's when and how will these dinosaurs find a way to survive in this new order?